Hey there, my name is Sean Ascrin Hargens, and I'm the founder of Meta Integral and the creator of the Meta Impact Framework. I want to take just a few minutes to walk you through the Meta Impact Framework and share with you a very cool example of it applied in the context of healthcare. I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. So I want to start with this quote from John Fullerton, Capital Institute, and it reads. We can and must bring our economic theory and practice into alignment with our latest understanding of how the universe and our humanity work. This quote really encapsulates kind of the core motivation for my creation of the Med Impact Framework. I wanted to have a framework that highlighted different types of value, different types of capital that really reflect um, the multidimensionality of humanity and our planet, and provided an integrated way to make visible those different types of value. And so that we could build systems, build wisdom economies that better reflect um, our situation, and reflect the, the organizations and the projects um, and the communities that we're involved in. And the current models that we use for business and for economics, in many ways fall short of really encapsulating the multiple dimensions and aspects of reality that feel like they really need to be included in our design work. So business as usual is changing. And this is a very exciting time to be involved with organizations and economics and business. Things like conscious capitalism are on the rise, the chapters all over the US and globally. Social impact investing um, is taking off, um, social responsibility. We also see the creation of B Corps and for benefit companies and many kind of hybrid style organizations that kind of you know, dismantle the division between nonprofit and for profit and look for new ways to structure organizations. We also have increasing forms of alternative currency, including cryptocurrency. We have things like blockchain and holochain that are providing new platforms to, to build transparent financial transactions on. We have integrated accounting and reporting that uses multiple capitals. We have the new economy movement in general, as well as the sharing economy with examples like Uber or Airbnb. And then we have a variety of multi-capital frameworks that have emerged over the last 10 years. So kind of in this context, I created the Meta Impact Framework. Created it in 2015. It was the result of you know, identifying and studying over 20 multi-capital models, looking at the different types of capital they included, getting a sense of why they included those types of capital and not others, looking for patterns um, across the models, and then at the end of the day, taking all of that and producing the Meta Impact Framework, which I felt um, kind of brought together the best of all those models um, and really went beyond them in a number of important ways in that it does a better job of identifying the relationships between the capitals, um, both in terms of uh, methodologies, but also in terms of you know, the theory of you know how they're related um, in terms of reality, um, and also how our you know, worldviews um, interface with those. And it also does a unique job of linking on um, the four dimensions, which we'll get into in just a moment. And so this model is anchored in the academic and metric-based literature. Um, all ten of the capitals, for example, um, have been find and developed in the literature. So I'm building on and drawing on that material. And the framework's being used by mission-driven organizations, both nonprofit and for-profit, as well as by communities and groups, and even for global systems analysis. So I've mentioned there's these four dimensions. There's four types of impact, 10 types of capital, three types of data, and four types of bottom lines. So if you look at the diagram over here, you can see the four types of impact. Deep impact, clear impact, high impact, and wide impact. 
Now, I realized in looking at social impact that we use the phrase social impact to refer to a lot of different kinds of impact. And I felt that it was useful to differentiate um, between the types of impact that we're wanting to have. Um, because it feels like a lot of the conversation around social impact, um, people are talking about very different things and calling it social impact. So I wanted to kind of drill down into that. So I've come up with, with these four types. So um, deep impact, So deep impact here is um, the transformation of hearts and minds. Right? So it's really transforming how people see the world, they think, their values, how they feel and relate to themselves and others, um, and how they experience um, the world around them. And whereas clear impact really focuses on um, you know, bodies and, and behavior and, and kind of you know, what we can see and how action changes. And, and so it's clear in the sense that we kind of see it with you know, our own eyes, you know, with our senses. Um, it's observable in some you know, important respect. Then high impact is the transformation of environments and systems. So it can be economic systems, political systems, educational systems, the different kinds of systems that we can analyze and look for the acupuncture points and by making shifts or changes in a few key areas, it can create systematic change across an entire um, system. Then wide impact is the transformation of um, relationships and culture. Right? So social networks, how people connect to each other, community coherence, and so forth. So for-profits tend to focus on clear and high impact, whereas nonprofits tend to focus on deep and wide impact. Right. And so for us, meta impact is when you include all four types of impact. There's also the 10 types of capital, and health, human, manufactured, financial, natural, cultural, social, knowledge, psychological, and spiritual. And as I mentioned, each of these 10 types of capital have been established and defined um, in the literature. And so there's already books and, and dozens of articles um, that help you know, describe what's included in these types of capital and what kinds of metrics can be used to measure them and so forth. So this model just kind of brings together all of that in a nice integrated um, framework. There's three types of data, uh, first person, second person, and third person. So each of these concentric circles kind of represents those data streams. So first and second person, or subjective and intersubjective, essentially refers to what we would call qualitative data. And then third person is what we refer to as quantitative data. So this is a mixed methods approach that includes both quantitative and qualitative. And then there's four types of bottom lines. Um, the standard triple bottom line of people, profit, and planet. And then the fourth bottom line of purpose. And one thing I noticed is that when um, you have four bottom lines, typically that fourth bottom line is purpose. Um, so we're also here building on, you know, kind of what's been done by many others in different areas. What's unique about this model, though, is the way it links and integrates um, the types of impact with, you know, the types of capital and the types of you know, data streams or metrics that can measure those capitals and help, you know, identify how much impact you're having in these four areas and then combines um, the capitals um, into the bottom line. So these five capitals go into the people bottom line, these five over here on the right go into profit, these bottom five go into planet, and these five on the left go into purpose, right? So this gives us an integrated view of the relationship between these elements or dimensions. So wisdom economies are defined as being open, inclusive, regenerative, green, circular, transparent, integrative, and multi-capitalist, right? So, so everything that we would really want uh, our economic systems um, to emulate um, and express. And so I like to think of wisdom economies as the ability to cultivate and track multiple forms of value in a way that preserves the wholeness of the people and the systems. And they're wise because they make room for and integrate the insights from all 10 of the major domains of human knowledge and understanding, 
as represented by the capitals. And this allows us to design systems that work for all of us and work for the planet. So nothing's as powerful as an idea whose time has come. There's been many indications that um, this framework um, is timely. People are responding very positively to it. We're seeing it applied in a lot of different areas. Um, there's a lot of people doing similar work like this out there. Um, and so it's part of this larger zeitgeist of reimagining capital, reimagining our um, economic systems, and finding ways to make value visible that's already in a system, right? So a lot of times the use of this framework is not about bringing more value into a system, but just helping individuals, um, the leaders, the clients, um, the stakeholders, to actually just see the value that's already there. So let me give you a, an example of what this looks like in action. Um, so the wisdom of all 10 capitals um, in the context of healthcare in South Australia. So this is a case study that comes from my colleague, um, Tanya Lehman, and she's based in um, country um, um, health in South Australia. They employ about 500 health professionals and range of um, kind of job descriptions from physiotherapists to occupational therapists to dietitians and social workers and so on. And starting in 2009, they had very high vacancy rates. 20% um, of the dietitian spots would need to be filled and 50% of the physiotherapists um, would need to be filled. So they did two to four rounds of advertising to fill, fill those vacant positions. And so this is the attraction problem, like how to attract people to, to fill um, these spots that are open. They're also having very high turnover, um, about every three years, 50%. And so this was the retention side of the problem. In addition, they were having very young, inexperienced workforce. Um, you know, over 50% had just recently graduated from school, and they were also experiencing high rates of burnout. Right? So this was the challenge. Um, Tanya used the Meta Impact Framework um, to analyze the problem. And so here you can see how the different aspects of the problem are highlighted by the different colors which are connected to the different types of capital. So you have things like burnout, lack of professional development and support you know, related to psychological capital, relationship to knowledge capital, you have low confidence to deliver on expected broad scope of practice, and there's also a knowledge skills gap. And also with spiritual capital up here, you have people feeling undervalued and misunderstood, and you have an unclear purpose in terms of um, the role and scope. Right? So all those are part of deep impact. And if we come over here to social and cultural capital, you know, wide impact. Social capital, we see professionals being isolated, um, and then they're also isolated personally from friends and family and their support network. And then in terms of um, culture, Capital, so there's an unfamiliar lifestyle and environment. So culturally, it's very different than um, being in the city because there's more rural um, you know, employment opportunities. Then if we come over to clear impact, up here you have workplace stress and safety concerns and a high sick leave and turnover. So those are part of health capital. Um, and then in terms of human capital, the clinical scope of role was broader than the skills and capabilities. In terms of manufactured capital, the demand for services was higher than the capacity. In terms of financial capital, there was costs involved for regular travel to see family, cost of training and support. So those were barriers. And then um, geographically, um, folks were isolated in the environment. There was travel safety risks um, in terms of cars actually hitting um, kangaroos and that causing accidents. Um, so. So this shows you how using the 10 capitals, you can drill down into specific contributions to the problem. So you get a, a nice overview of the many layers of the challenge. Um, and then this can inform how you intervene. So if we look at the interventions that um, Tanya did, um, and again, they've used, she's used the color coding to highlight um, which intervention kind of is associated with each um, form of capital, right? Though in many cases, there's overlap um, between these. Um, 
but this helps you just get a sense of kind of where you might focus and what are some of the different dynamics um, that are at play. So the interventions were transition to rural and remote professional practice program, um, countrywide professional development program developed, training and development strategy per profession, and university partnerships and student placements. Um, and then also in deep impact was countrywide profession, networks established, clarification of role, scope, and purpose. Right? So you can see they're basically kind of addressing all the, the issues and layers that were identified on the previous slide. And here with wide impact, we have countrywide professional networks and annual face-to-face -face meeting, orientation and induction program with focus on linking into local supporting or sporting activities and community. So here they're addressing the isolation issues, personal and professional. And you also have strength in local peer networks, social life, young professionals program. We're dealing with some of the cultural aspects. And in terms of clear impact, you have clinical supervision and mentoring occurring. There's an actually an isolated worker policy that was developed and put in place. Clinical governance and leadership structure, career progression pathways identified. And then in terms of high impact, you had countrywide service access and um, prioritization framework developed, 2000 a year for professional development, then isolated worker policy and process. Right? So these were the interventions that they developed to address um, the different layers across the 10 capitals. Then fast forward um, you know, three to five years and they actually had results in all four types of impact. And again, um, she's used the color coding um, to help identify which type of impact. So starting with clear impact, there was reduced vacancy rates um, to less than 5% across all the allied health professions, which is incredible given you know, the huge you know, vacancies that they were having up to this point. Increased number of applications received for those vacant positions. The majority of vacant roles filled within the first round of advertising. Intention increased, 20% um, increase in level two roles. Um, you know, 53 level three roles were created. One level four role created per profession. And the average length of tenure increased by almost 12 months. So these are very demonstrable, clear impact results. Then if you look over at deep impact, um, we have staff report, um, increased levels of job satisfaction, pride, clarity of role, higher labor levels of optimi optimism. We also have increased number of presentations delivered at state and national conferences showcasing good work and networking. So this is the knowledge capital and sharing that. Um, you know, so you know, this really highlights how the psychological, spiritual, and knowledge um, capitals were, were very successfully addressed in these interventions. Then with respect to um, the impact for um, wide impact, a strong countrywide professional networks, sharing of resources, standardization of practices, strong sense of collective professional identity and connectedness. Right? So they really addressed the, the isolation that was occurring and really started to build a new culture, a new community um, around this. And then lastly, in terms of uh, the high impact, increased volume of services provided, reduction in recruitment costs, reduction in um, you know, local agency costs, right? So, wow, you know, this, you know, saved money. <laughs> so all of these interventions ultimately, you know, had impact across all four types of impact, including um, attended to the bottom line, right? So this highlights how by taking the time to do a 10 um, capital analysis, of the situation and then identifying interventions that addressed you know many if not all of those um, different layers that were identified that they then were able to generate um, you know impact in all four areas which we would call meta impact um, and it's just such a cool illustration of how this kind of holistic integrative approach um, you know has very concrete um, you know outcomes you know in just a three to five year period which in some cases might seem like a long time, but given the problem and the challenge, um, you know, there's pretty quick results. And these are gonna be long-term um, results where you know, by following um, kind of the, the, the new best practices that they developed in this process, they've really set in motion kind of a whole new phase of the organization that's gonna continue you know, for quite some time. So, you know, imagine what's possible when we apply this kind of integrative approach to designing and creating wisdom economies.
creating more and more systems of value exchange that preserve the wholeness inherent in our natural and social systems. And we just might begin to be able to create the world that our hearts knows is possible. Paraphrase from Charles Einstein. So there you have it. A very quick kind of overview of the Med Impact Framework and an illustrative example showing um, its recent application um, in Australia. So please join us um, and connect with us and help us further develop this model and find new ways to um, apply it and design wisdom economies. Thank you so much.